All right. In this video, we're going to take a look at physics, both how you can set it up without any coding in the editor to get objects to collide with each other, and then what scripting we can do behind that to get more information about the collisions. We'll also take a look at a physics operation called raycast, which is a way to see um, what objects in a moving object may collide with. You can check the distance between objects that way. Uh, it's also used for some mouse operations if you wanted to grab a 3D object with your mouse, uh, for instance. We'll only look at a simple application of that, but there's quite a few things you can do with Raycast. So let's jump right in. We'll open up Unity. I've already got the demo source project loaded up here. And inside Assets, Unity with Cocktails, Lesson 2.4, we've got a uh, one scene for the physics setup. Now the setup that we see here we've got some wine cask barrels and then a stone ball and a wooden floor. All of these are already set up as physics objects so I'll talk about that setup in a moment but let's just simply press play watch the physics and then press stop. You can see that there's collision happening uh, reactions, the objects fall with gravity. Um, you'll also notice, let me go ahead and maximize on play, and you'll see that the, the moment I start, the barrels drop a little bit. Let's see if you can notice that. There it was very briefly. And that's a typical physics setup where instead of beginning objects with contact, where you manually drag them, move them, so that they're exactly fitting on top of each other. You can simplify that by having them float just a little bit above each other and in the first moment of physics they will settle. And you'll find that that, um, that is a good setup to limit yourself from possible problems that would be come about if you had objects that were overlapping. For instance, if I started this barrel into the other ones that's going to cause physics problems. The objects could, you may get an error, the objects could kind of explode in the first moment to get themselves apart causing a, a dramatic reaction that you don't want. So a simple setup is where you just have the objects float. Similarly the ball is floating a little bit above the floor. Now the reason that that ball moves the way it does is because that floor is tilted. If I take a look at the floor you can see ever so slightly it's tilted lower left and that's how we get that action. There's also coding that you can do if you wanted to start the ball on a flat surface but give it a little push with coding. And you can apply forces that way. So let's jump right in. First let's take a look. If I wanted to create a new cube, let's say, and have it drop into the scene, um, I could have the cube created this way. Okay. And over here on the right, we can see by default these are the different components that we get with an object. It's not set up by default to do any physics. So if I go ahead and run this, the close white cube there does not fall with the gravity. What I need to do is with that object selected in the scene view, I add a component for physics called rigid body. Rigid in this case means that the geometry itself is not going to move, it's going to be firm, it's going to stay in place, it's going to be rigid, and the object in its entirety may fall through 3D space. So by using the menu we get this other component here, rigid body. The mass is the volume of the object in 3D space, the drag is how uh, with zero drag it would fall without any friction from air, let's say. Um, if we added a higher value for drag, we would see it slow down as it's falling or as it's moving. Um, and angular drag as it's rotating would have it slow down. So you can think of drag being a friction, where the higher the number, the more quickly the object is going to come to, uh, come to rest. The use gravity is, with that checked, it's going to fall. So we're going to see the close white cube fall at this point. Okay, so we see it fall and it um, 
collides with the floor. Now the floor has a rigid body as well. So any objects which would have rigid body are going to be treated like a physical, their physical counterpart, where if you had a floor and you had a cube, let's say made of wood, obviously that, that wooden cube is going to fall onto the floor and it's going to hit it, perhaps bounce off of it, etc. Now if we wanted to have the um, the reaction here of the white block, it just falls and just doesn't bounce at all. Maybe that's the reaction that you'd want. But if you wanted a different reaction, you can add what is called a physics material. So let's add a new asset of a physic, oh, excuse me, create physic material. Now materials this option here is a purely visual wrapper around geometry. You can think of you know, uh, the wooden look to the floor. That is a material. A physic material on their hand doesn't have a visual counterpart. It just dictates how bouncy, how slippery a surface is. So if we want to change the behavior from the default, we add the physics material. And let's call this bouncy. And then I simply drag that to the uh, cube. We can see that uh, is that added? Yeah, it gets added to the box collider. So the box collider is a is a uh, geometry that is invisible that dictates the bounds of this object. So we can see in the scene view, I'm resizing it. By default, it's going to be a box shape around any cubes or rectangles. So we'll just keep that its default value of 111. And then inside there is where the bouncy physic material sits. So if I click on the physic material and I change its bounciness to 1 and its bounce combined to multiply, you can fool around with those settings and look at the documentation by clicking this little book icon here, uh, which will open up the documentation and tell you more about those settings. But let's go ahead and play with just the change of the bouncy material. It doesn't bounce too terribly much. Let's drag that bounce material onto the floor as well. Now you can see both the floor, the wooden floor, and the white box have bounciness. And you can see it bounces a few times. If we wanted to have it bounce more, we could just increase the... Well, I guess that's, that's as high as we can make that go. And multiply Let's see what maximum does there. Okay, that's going to be even bouncier. So you can see you can fool around with those different settings. Now if I want to get rid of that on the floor, let's click the floor, and we can see here it's set to bouncy, and we'll change that to none in the selector. And then we can go back to the cube itself, and we could change its physic material to none. If you had other physic materials in your project, they would show up in this list. So we'll just get rid of that. Now we're back to the default behavior where there's no bounds. All right. So that's how you set up any object. And it doesn't need to be a cube. It can be any of the other geometries or it can be an imported model. Now, we can see again the stone ball rolls down the wood and collides. And those objects kind of explode in a realistic way and then fall off. It's important to know they're going to fall forever. So as an optimization in your game, project, you would want to take care of that, perhaps checking when the balls are off screen and when the barrels are off screen, remove them. You could also have them remove when they collide, uh, maybe a second floor that is um, far beneath the screen, uh, so similar um, to this wooden floor here, you could have another wooden floor down off camera and when any object collides with that, you would remove them from the stage. You want to do that because having objects off screen, or they're still calculating physics and they're still um, taking up computation. So let's see, if we wanted to sense when we're colliding, let's take a look at some of the code we can do there. So if we look at the stone ball prefab, I've already created a script which is inside our uh, Unity physics scripts. So I have a ball collision detection component and that's already on our stone ball prefab. You can see it here. So let's go ahead and open that up. It's going to open mono develop.
So like all of our components, our ball collision detection script is a mono behavior where start is going to be called once when the movie starts, update is going to be called once every frame, and then down here we have some specially named methods that I didn't need to configure them anywhere. I don't need to turn them on per se. Um, any objects <clears throat> which have rigid body attached will automatically receive these, uh, receive calls to these methods, these events as, as you could call them too. There's on collision enter, on collision stay, and on collision exit. So let me go ahead and just put a trace in collision enter and collision exit. You can see I'm also checking to make sure we're talking about when the ball hits the floor because I only, for the to sake of simplicity in, in this exercise, I only want to look at collisions where the ball is hitting the floor, not where the ball is hitting the barrels. So go ahead and save and run. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. I'm checking where the where we're colliding with not the floor. So that does mean the barrels. So it was until the ball collided with the barrels, we started to see collision enter, collision enter, collision enter, collision enter, as it hit four of the barrels. And then a collision exits as it um, stopped hitting those barrels. So you can think of, let me see if I can step here. As we go, I'm gonna hit pause. And then let me just spin this world view around. Pause is very helpful to be able to step through each frame and see collisions. Okay, so you can see it's hit the very first object. I can't actually tell which one it is, but it hit one of those. And then as it collides with more. So you're able to see when it hits and when it stops hitting. In between the hit and the not hit, that could be seconds long. It just means that they're constantly um, brushed against each other. And that state is called stay. So enter is called once when it first hits. Stay is called every frame where it's still hitting. And exit is called when the hit ends. And you can think in your games there is lots of cases where you'd want to do this. For instance, if your character is shooting a bullet at an enemy, you could have a script on that bullet that says, when I collide with anything, let me know. And then you would do a check, collision, game object, name, and see if it's enemy because you might not want to do uh, to inflict damage if it hits a wall or if it hits your character or if it hits other objects. So you can check there and see, okay, it is uh, of the name of enemy. There's other things you could check there as well. You could check what tag it is. You could check some other things about its type. But for now, just know that uh, name is an easy one. And that name corresponds directly to the name over here. So let's uncomment. Right, let's comment out a few of those things, and let's take a look at uh, what we're doing here. So when I first enter the collision, all of these three methods get a collision object. You can get information about what game object we're hitting. You can also get a collision dot contacts, which is a list of all the contact points. So it's possible for two objects just to have one collision point in the case of a sphere on a sphere, but there could be other collision points depending on what the shape is if two parts are, are touching each other. So what I'll do is I'll draw a ray, which is a debug feature that will temporarily, just for debugging, draw a line in the view so we can actually see where the collision is happening. And I'll also trace out contact point. Uh, so let's go ahead and Restart and run. You might not notice it first. Okay, I'm going to run it again. Do a pause. I'm going to deselect that so I can step through here. Oh, it might be easier if I turn on wireframe here. There. So that white line is being drawn at where the collision is happening. So it's actually happening right there. And if I step through, you might notice a different one too. There was a different one. There's another one. So each time we see 
some debug tracing output, we know that a enter has happened. I'm in constant contact there. Yeah, so I was in constant contact with this one here. Um, but for each time we begin colliding with something, we get a list of the contact points. It may just be one or it may be more for that given collision. And then we're able to get some information about the position of that in 3D space. We can draw this line. That all is going to help you debug. All right, I think that's it. That is us looking at collision enter, collision stay, and collision exit. Now there's other ways that you could roll your own physics in a project. Um, there's ways you could script this yourself, but the, the default engine here is optimized to run very well and it gives you a lot of power about, you just get the realistic look of what you want as we see in the game view. You get those powerful loops that we saw in collision, enter, stay, and exit. So it serves you really well just to use the default. There may be cases where you don't want to use the default physics. There may be projects where you don't need physics. Um, so it just depends on the specific needs of your project. So let's take a look next at this block that is sitting over here on the side. And what that block will do, I'm going to bring the scene view over to take a look. and. Let's take a look at the script that's running on this. So we have white block cube and it's running block raycast component. So let's open that up. Again we're using mono behavior and all the code we're doing is inside update which is running every frame. Now what we're doing here is we you can think of the uh, raycast here is I'm checking to see you know, if we were to shoot a ray, which I can show you the ray here, if we were to shoot a ray, which is shown in white, from the center of that cube downwards, a certain distance, right, which it's not actually long enough to touch that, um, would it collide with anything? So this isn't real geometry, that line doesn't really exist in the world. Notice that in the right game view, we don't see it. It's only in the scene, which means it's only for our debugging eyes. It's not for your end user. But it helps you check to see um, if we were to shoot a line from one place in space toward another, would it collide with anything? And then we can get a list of the things it collides with. So you could do this, for instance, if you want to know if one character can see another character, you could cast a ray between one character let's say the player, and cast it directly to the enemy. And what you want to see is, did it collide with any objects between the player and the character, such as a wall or the floor or whatever? And if it did, that means one character cannot see another. So using simulating the vision for artificial intelligence of your enemy looking at your player, or your player looking at your enemy, um, helps you figure that out. So that's good use for physics. Uh, Raycast. So another use here is I just want to see uh, the, the distance between um, the white cube and the floor, right? which you could calculate in a variety of ways. But depending on the angle <coughs> of the floor object, let's say that the floor was rotated quite a bit like this. right? If we simply looked at the center point of the floor and the center point of the cube and did a measurement between, right, that, that, that distance isn't really going to tell us about the distance that we care about, which is maybe directly beneath the cube. Okay, So let's go ahead and just look at uh, here. So I'm saying that I'm going to shoot a ray down from the block to the floor and see does that line touch anything. And notice that the distance I have set is 2. So in two world units of the white line drawn, does it collide with anything? So I'm going to go ahead and play. And we see nothing trace out here. And while in this view it looks a little bit like we're colliding, if I move the camera around we see it's, it's not colliding yet. But what if I was to move that object down? And I can do that just by 
dragging this handbar down. Okay, so now it is. Oh, let me highlight. Now it is colliding there. So let's take a look at that. Okay, do I see that trace? I actually do not see the trace, which is interesting. Why don't I? Just make sure that this code is actually, I know the code is executing Oops. because we are seeing the ray being drawn. Pardon me while I debug here a moment. So we can see that's running every frame. Oh, okay. It is being traced out. So run it again. Okay. Just a little hiccup there, I'm not sure why. So we can see that the white line, pause actually so we can continue that line. That white line is indeed going through the floor. We're so close it's quite obvious in that respect. Let me move it up a little bit. It is moving through the floor. And you can get a lot of things about that collision, but you could see, yes, I'm touching something, what I'm touching is the floor, or you could see I'm touching, the white line touches five objects. It touches a floor, it touches an enemy, it tells you which one's the most close. Um, so that's a really good way to use the physics ray cast to be able to tell what is in front of an object, what is below an object. If um, my object was moving forward, you'd be able to cast a ray straight in front of where it's moving and be able to tell them I'm about to collide with something. And that might be useful in your project. Uh, you might want to know, before I actually hit it, am I going to hit it? So it's something a little earlier than on collision enter, because on collision enter is only triggered once the object is actually hitting the floor. But maybe in this case, I care uh, to know something a little earlier. You know, am I two units away? If so, maybe my character puts his hands up, bracing himself to, to about to touch the wall or something like that. Um, that's it for that. Let me see. So we've talked about um, how you can create a new cube, put the rigid body on it, have gravity, have it fall. Oh, uh, one more note on that is the floor and its rigid body, I do not have use gravity checked because I want the floor to be in a consistent position. If I had that uh, checked to use gravity, you'll see, and I have is kinematic unchecked the floor is just going to fall and that's not going to help us because with the game board falling through space we can't actually play our game so by using is kinematic uh, that I believe allows us to uh, move the object during the simulation so you could have this be a moving floor and use gravity checked off means that we don't want to have that the object fall with acceleration constantly down um, let's take one more look. Speaking of gravity, if we go to our project settings physics, we will see here that by default, this matrix shows the, um, the different layers that we have in our project. We haven't talked about layers yet, but any object in space can be given one of these layers or more, and you can create custom layers. And then down here, it's just showing what collides with what. Well, by default, everything collides with everything. But if we wanted the ball not to collide with the um, barrels, for instance, actually, let's go ahead and do that. So I'll make a barrel layer. And then I'll go to the barrels. And up here under layer, I will give them a barrel type. Hit apply. And that apply means that all of them are now of type barrel. And then back in the physics settings, project settings and physics, we now see barrel. And we'll have barrel not collide with default. And our floor is of type default. So let's see if that worked. Yep. 
so the barrels no longer collide with floor. So you can create exceptions where maybe you want some things to interact as real world physics objects and you want some things not to interact. Right? We could also tag the ball and the barrel and have those not collide, but have them both collide with the floor or any combination that you need. So I'll undo that now since by default we do want um, that collision to happen. So I will turn that to default, hit apply. So now all wood barrel prefabs are type default, floor is default, barrels are default, everything's going to collide. And as a last step, I'm just going to comment out that trace, so we're back to the default behavior. Okay, so there you can see it. We've done uh, the physics raycast, we've done the collisions, we've done setting up a new object, we've talked a little bit about the project settings. So that is physics in Unity. Thank you.